Please stay with us. Now let's take a look at the details now and as part of activities to round up the 2014 schedule. The Clean Communities team today held a national sanitation forum at the Kaukudi Park to discuss water, sanitation and hygiene issues in the year. Speaking at the ceremony, Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Julius Debra commended the team for the good work and used the occasion to appeal to civil society organizations to get involved in the fight for clean communities. Anyway, I think we should commend our friends from Multimedia, Joy News, and Multi TV for this initiative, and to also thank the Star Ghana for for backing it up. Essentially, those of us uh, from the central government, we do admit that uh, we cannot do it all, and so when we see uh, civil society groups and other organisations trying to help us to keep our environment and cities clean is something that we really, really appreciate it. And so we're trying to do a preventive approach instead of waiting for people to get um, sick. Still at the program, some WASH experts also took the chance to deliberate on the issues that came up this year and also offer solutions to the problems at stake. As the name connotes, we have community, meaning that it is very important to focus on the community in general when it comes to sanitation, instead of focusing on the individual, so that you'll be able to achieve the social change. So the community led total sanitation involves the general community. And as you said, most of these communities have attained this ODF uh, status. And what we really did, I think, uh, which everyone who is involved in this program does, you want to uh, make sure that people understand their own situation in relation to what they do, their actions, and that you get to the point where people have realized that they have eaten their own shit. And in the whole world, nobody wants to really eat their own shit. Everybody, even children, when you, you understand that you have eaten your shit, everybody starts running away. The issue about, of sanitation is a shared one. Now, for those of us in government, we have looked at the cost of having to manage sanitation if it gets out of hand. Now, it takes a chunk of the revenue that we derive, which hitherto can be used for other investment that goes to impact positively on the livelihood of the ordinary citizen. So for us, it is important that these initiatives that has been brought about would be sustained. Now, investors are being brought in to assess the commercial viability of rocks in Bongo in the Upper East Region. The rocks suspected to contain mineral deposits could also be exploited for construction purposes. Bongo District Chief Executive Alexis Ayamdo at an end-of-year press briefing said the rocks which are in vast deposits in the area have the potential to create employment and also generate employment. Upper East correspondent Abesori has more. The Bongo district has huge rocks in many parts of the area. These rocks make beautiful sights for many who visit Bongo. In some parts of the district, these rocky hills are shrines of worship for the local people. However, the rocks have never been exploited for commercial purposes. Bongo District Chief Executive Alexis Ayamdu, during a press briefing as part of his end-of-year activities, said the Assembly has been talking to some investors who soon explore the commercial potential of the rocks. Last year, the Bongo rocks, we had, we had an investor that had an interest, you know, and the interest had gone even very far. We had sat even in the Assembly here to resolve that it was proper for us to partner with that investor and the Savannah Associated Development Authority side. Um, we were just, the project was just about taking off when the new leadership you know, took 
Saga, a took over from Saga. And so as we speak now, uh, we are awaiting the approval of the new leadership for the investor to move to Saga. But we are still bent on ensuring that we exploit the mineral content or we exploit the, 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 the fine nature of the law for other non-development activities. Mr. Ayamdu also touched on some issues of development in the Bongo district. The small carbon system uh, are under construction and so on and so forth. As I speak, work has started in these communities. The Secretary has also realized the precarious water carbon situation in the district against the backdrop of high level of fluoride content as I indicated earlier in our underground waters. And this has been one of the cases that we have been making. Chief of the Bongo Traditional Area, Naba Baba Salifu Lamiarom, emphasized the eco tourism potential of the Bongo district. The eco tourism that was mentioned is very uh, laudable because uh, when we talk about opening the district, we need to mention our tourist areas. And Bongo is endowed with such a facility. And we are making efforts really to ensure that. Uh, we make use of that, the facility, the rocks. A report by so Albert Story. You're watching the primetime bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV and also on ABN TV across Europe. We'll take a breather. Please don't go. Welcome back and many thanks for staying. Now, the Deputy Water Resources Minister has led a fact finding mission to. to to tour some communities in Adenta where water supply is said to be erratic. The tour follows report of inconsistent water supply just days after President Mahama commissioned the expanded water project at Bom. The acute water shortage in Adenta and its environs was supposed to have improved with some 20 million gallons of water pumping through pipes from the Pong Water Expansion Project commissioned on 23 December 2014. There are however complaints of inconsistent water supply while some areas do not have water at all. The tour to assess the problem began at the Snit Flat and Adenta and continued around Adenta Housing Down and surrounding communities. The minister interacted with households on their water situations. But if you buy water, they, every now and then you spend so much money money in buying water. Every week you have to buy water. Now that we are, the taps are flowing, we are so happy. We used to buy water, like say 20 Ghana, 20 Ghana cities for three days. 20 Ghana cities for three days. So you can imagine, within a week, we would have been spending about uh, 40 Ghana cities. So 40 Ghana cities times... Uh, times four. Times four. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. That's a 160. 160. 1.6 million. 160 Ghana, Ghana cities. Yes. We are saving so much. We are so happy. This pipe was open to rest about, I think, three days to the old, uh, uh, when, when was that? Tuesday. 20, 25th. 25th. Oh, Christmas Day. Day. And I think on uh, 26, then the line went off again. Then just this morning when we wake up and we saw that the, the water is flowing again. Yeah. While some workers of the Ghana Water Company on the tour tried to fix a worrying number of leakages found, the deputy minister advised residents to have their local plumbers work on their domestic pipes to curb the wastage. When we, 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 we inspected, the, most of them had the um, pipes coming out of the joint, so I think they should be easy to repair. Where there are large leakages, this must be reported to the, uh, to the district offices. Uh, we will give you some telephone lines where you can call. More complaints of lack of water, however, emerged to assurances by the deputy minister. Adenta Commando and the youngsters are among those areas. Today, water is not coming. 
Describing reports on the water situation in these areas as exaggerated, Deputy Minister Johnny Osei Kofi attributed the problem to faulty pipes and the amount of water being churned out currently. He said this should change in the next few days ahead. We are even supplying only, only half of what the project is intended to do. This half 20 million um, is quite sufficient, you know, for many places to, to, to get. But it has also helped us to identify uh, some problem areas which we will tackle, you know, from now. For Christmas, we give you 20 million. Now, the days ahead of us, we are preparing to add another 20 million uh, gallons to it. I think that the reports that we have read in some of the papers and the news that we've got uh, have been a little bit of some exaggeration because many of the houses here as we move around are not having leakages. Some do have. It was certain after the tour that water is indeed flowing through taps in Adenta, although it doesn't flow 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Again. Water wastage may become another problem if the faulty pipelines being blamed for the leakages and inconsistencies are not fixed as soon as possible. Gifty and Dopia, Joy News, Adenta, Aqua. Meanwhile, the Deputy Water Resources Works and Housing Minister, John Yosekofi, has appealed for information which will enable the ministry and its agencies clamp down on illegal water operatives. The Deputy Minister was speaking at the Legon Police Command where some persons had been arrested for the same offence and their operation trucks impounded. My minister asked me to also request from the public something we have done, but we are going to do it again and again to start looking for people who are depriving your communities of water. They steal the water and sell them to you at a higher price. Please, in the coming days, we are going to put out dedicated lines and contact numbers, both for the police and for the ministry. Inform us quietly. We will contact you, pass the information to the appropriate quarters, and make those arrests. And those who will be arrested, don't try to bribe anybody because it would not work. These impounded trucks and water storage containers were used by the illegal water operatives to tap water from the Ghana Water Company's main pipelines, which they later sold to residents within Adringano and East Legon, where they were arrested. Legon District Police Commander DSP Imano Basintali told journalists the arrest was a joint effort between the Ghana Water Company Limited and his outfit. They were tapping the water from Ghana Water Lines without the knowledge of Ghana Water Company. And they had also created underground reservoirs or tanks where they store the water and then resell it to consumers. These are suspects, so when they were arrested, because you know these are misdemeanors and uh, minor crimes, so they were granted bail. All of them have been surcharged. Oh, Those okay. who have the reservoirs, I'm told by the engineer, he's here, he would confirm that, that each person is to pay 10,000 Ghana cities. And uh, those who are using the vehicles, each person is to pay 1,500 Ghana cities. And that is according to the law. If they fail, then we will process them for court. Eight persons between the ages of 19 and 81 were arrested in all. Two absconded and are still on the run. We are expecting other police stations, other police commands all over the country to wake up, to help us, to arrest such nation records. We will assure Ghanaians that this matter will not rest. 
we will personally follow it to the courts. If the courts say that these people who have been stealing our water and those who are helping them to steal with their vehicles are not guilty, then they are not guilty. But if the courts say that they are guilty, then we would ask for the severest punishment for them because these are nation records. The remaining six, which includes drivers of the trucks and homeowners, have been granted bail. Kitian Dopia, John News, Legon. Some residents in the Upper West Regional Capital Wire have expressed doubt over the region's preparedness to fight the deadly Ebola disease in case of an outbreak in that region. The Health Ministry in July set up a makeshift structure with a promise to build a permanent structure later. Now, five months on, the project site has been overtaken by weeds. Rafiq Salam visited the makeshift structure and has filed the following report. The makeshift structure was acquired by the Wa Regional Hospital through the help of the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, as a temporary structure to contain the deadly disease in case of an outbreak in the region. A white bulb hung on the wall, which has not been turned off since the center was put up some five months ago. In between these two beds are droppings of lizards, dust and cobwebs, signs that the place has not been swept for days. Brian Seydu Sato, resident of Wa, expressed doubt about the region's preparedness for the disease. It's just unfortunate. It's unfortunate because and I heard that they were doing some preparations to have a center here. But what the structure I saw is just an eyesore. If that is what they are living for, this region as an emergency center is quite unfortunate and it's nothing to write home about. And I don't know who are the people in charge of that. It's just unfortunate that a region that is close to the border where people are coming in on daily basis, going out on daily basis, if there's a single Ebola case in the Upper West region and you go there, I think it's just unfortunate. The residents put this appeal across to government. This is not an appeal. It's, it's a right I'm demanding. People must not die needlessly. The government, the health ministry, Ghana Health Service must all be up and doing and ensure that we save lives. We are not saying Ebola is coming. It is here or it's going to come. But how prepared are we? Do we are we saying that by putting a camp a, a makeshift camp, we are prepared. Even if you go inside a makeshift camp, what is there? It's a fecal matter of uh, lizards. Nothing. There's no any human activity there. So I think that we should be serious and out and about. At least uh, government should think about it seriously. We are also part of this country and we should get our share. Public relations officer of the War Regional Hospital, Abdullahi Kayana, conceded, although the structure only exists in name, Plans are far afoot to build a permanent structure. A report by Rafiq Salam. Holes right there in Ghana's own preparedness, well, as far as that region is concerned. But meanwhile, a healthcare worker who has just returned from Sierra Leone has been diagnosed with Ebola and is being treated in a hospital in Glasgow. The woman who arrived on Sunday night is in isolation at Glasgow's Gat Naval Hospital. All possible contacts with the case are being investigated, including on flights to Scotland via Heathrow. The woman will be transferred to specialist high-level isolation in London as soon as possible. At a news conference in Glasgow, First Minister Nicola Sturgeon stressed that the risk to the general public was very low. But in spite of the assurance of low risk, the Ebola scare is high. On the telephone line to give us some more information on this uh, breaking story is Nana Sifachum from Scotland. Hello there. Hello. Thank you very much for your time. Now, how is Scotland handling the Ebola confirmation? Uh, well, um, Scotland is saying that they are very much prepared in relation to the handling of Ebola, and uh, true to their word, uh, they have um, just released a statement that they are going to send the lady uh, mm. whose identity has been shrouded in secrecy uh, for obvious reasons yeah. to a London hospital uh, where uh, cancer enforcement has been very, very much updated so that victims of Ebola and other diseases that are uh, treated. So mm. that is what they are doing now. Um, they don't have much information. And even if they have, they don't want any information about the situation, except that the lady arrived from Sierra Leone 
I drew Casablanca to get to airport. And for the reason that he flew from Kitro to Glasgow last time, the authorities are also linked up with the division with to look at the uh, seriousness of other people who were on board in the flight. Hmm. Well, you said they are saying that they are ready or they are prepared to handle such situations, uh, such issues. But what specifically are they saying? Exactly what have they done in terms of preparations to uh, contain this outbreak? Well, we have made available logistics and personnel at the Royal Free Hospital in London, purposely right. for this um, Ebola issue because uh, they were very alert that. Any time that the sense of the uh, virus uh, in any person mm. in, the, in this area of UK, they were going to match our resources and uh, both human and logistics in there to look at it. So that is how prepared we are. We have also alerted all hospitals, the NHS uh, hospitals in the UK, mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, with, with the information about Ebola and mm. are also providing information all around. You watch their televisions, you read their newspapers, and almost everywhere they have information about Ebola. And for for, for instance, this lady, when she arrived last night, uh, the, the source said that the lady was feeling unwell, and she never reported until somebody asked her to go and report because um, the symptoms were, 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 were said that they, they, were, they were suspected the virus. Mm -hmm. And that was how was their legs level of the people that we have in the, in the UK here. So they, they, they are very much aware in terms of preventive and curative aspects of Ebola. Mm. So, so what you're saying is that the level of education or the level of alertness in, in, the, in the UK or in Scotland, as far as Ebola is concerned, is very high. Do we know the race of this woman since um, uh, the, the, the disease or the virus, if you like, uh, actually originated from Africa? Yeah, I, I, I've just said that information about the lady is, is not forthcoming because of obvious reasons. Right. Um, they are not trying to tell where she works, what she does, but what we know for sure is that she is a nurse who volunteered to go and work in the, one Sierra of the Leone. juvenile hospitals in Sierra Leone uh, right. in terms of uh, compacting the uh, Ebola virus. And then she returned after uh, some time and came back. Mm -hmm. And so regarding the question you asked uh, about awareness, yep. I arrived here in the UK about two weeks ago, and believe you me that the, the level of information that going around in the UK is not the type of information that we have in Ghana. The information is very, very high in terms mm -hmm. of radio announcement, television, um, information, posters, hospital, leaflets, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Things that I didn't find uh, uh, in Ghana. Right. Let me let me uh, get a bit personal with you. Now you arrived in the UK. You say in two weeks uh, two weeks ago at the airport. Wh how was the screening exercise there like? <laughs> very, 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 very good question. Uh, I, I, I arrived from the UK. Uh, I arrived in the UK from Dubai. Right. So I thought that I was not on a direct flight from West Africa. That was why I was not screened. Mm. But I've called several friends and relatives who, have, who came by pretty sure with, who is a direct flight from West Africa. And I'm told they were not screened at the airport. Uh, uh, even even Hitro, they were not screened. I, I picked my son from Hitro yesterday morning, and I asked him whether he was screened. He said he wasn't screened. All I was told that on the on the on board the plane, they were asked to report if somebody falls nervous or falls um, um, unwell, mm. or, or or if you are coughing, mm. or if you have high temperature, they report to the crew. Uh, it's something that I really think it uh, as something that can happen. Exactly. Exactly. And that brings me to my final question, <clears throat> I beg your pardon, about your own fears. What are your personal fears as somebody who is living, well, you have quite, you have quite a proximity with this case that has been reported because you're living in Scotland. What are your personal fears, if there are any? Uh, personally, I don't have the fears, but uh, uh, because of 
the, the level of alertness, people are panicking. Yeah. But this, I was talking to friends them as a, uh, um, in the mainstream media here mm -hmm. uh, who were just telling me that uh, it, it's, not, it's not the right time. Uh, what time they wanted it to be right, I don't know. But according to them, they, 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 in fact, they, they, they are panicking. Uh, right. you, can, you, can, you, can, you can see on the television news that there are, there are some panic reactions and stuff like that. But mm. uh, nevertheless, they are also coming looking at the issue as, as very critical and looking mm. at how they can combat it. And like I said, we have all the resources, according to them, a both man and logistics to right. combat it. Right. I'm sure they are relying on the authorities as well to keep them safe. Thank you very much. Nana Sifa Chum is a journalist in Scotland uh, telling us, giving us some update on a, an Ebola case that has been recorded in Scotland. You're still watching Primetime Bulletin here on Joy News on Multi TV and also on ABN TV across Europe. We'll take a breather. Please stay with us. Let's do some sports. Enjoy sports has gathered. The senior members of the Black Stars will meet the management committee of the team to discuss arrangements for the team's AFCON participation. Now, top of the agenda will be the reported offer of $5,000 as match fees during the tournament, as well as other arrangements. A source close to the playing body revealed to Joy Sports that, quote, the unhappiness of the playing body is due to the arbitrary nature of the decision by the Ministry of Youth and Sport and the disrespect in not trying to reach a consensus with the players before the decision was reached. It is not clear whether the team playing body will accept the offer made by the ministry with 19 days to the start of the AFCON in Equatorial Guinea and Gabon. Meanwhile, the team's first training session scheduled for Monday could be postponed as head coach Avram Grant has still not returned from his Christmas break. A 22-year-old electrician in Santasi Kumasi has been adjudged the 2014 Golfer of the Year at the second edition of the Ghana Golf Awards over the weekend. Ochehene Osajifo Amwecho for opinion, the second live patron of GGA, graced the occasion and urged all golfers to continue to give their best in all competitions in the coming years. Golf Personality of the Year Award went to Alfred Baku of the Tafo Golf Club, while Vincent Toga of Tema Country Golf Club emerged professional golfer of the year. <clears throat> On that congratulatory note, that's it for sports. It's now time for business, and I'm Abigail Adomakuinchi. First off, we'll talk about some analysis that uh, analysts are doing on the 2014 fiscal year. And head of GN Research, Samuel Kofiampa, is predicting difficult times for Ghana in 2015 due to the energy crisis and the absence of donor inflows. He, however, believes a program from the International Monetary Fund (IMF) will bring the economy some respite if government is able to secure it. Ghana, an example to the rest of Africa, with the world's fastest growing economy in 2011, suddenly faced economic downturns from 2013 and entered 2014 with these challenges, including a fast depreciating currency, a skyrocketing inflation, among other fiscal pressures. Although analyst Samuel Kofiampa appreciates the interventions government has put in place, he believes there is more to be done. A lot of analysts uh, spoke about government, um, you know, should pay a little more attention to widening the tax, the tax net. Um, it, is, it will amaze you that if you go to the Ghana Revenue Authority today to tell you how many people are paying income tax, they don't have the figures. How many people are paying property tax, they don't have the figures. Okay, But they, they, at the end of the year, they are able to generate some figures 
to put out there to say that this is so much we've collected as pay um, income tax. This is so much we've collected as property tax or property rent or whatever. But how many people are paying them? So, it pre, I mean, you, you, could, you, could, you, you could assume that the, the number of people can be increased if government should have a proper mechanism, a system where you can track people who are paying and track people who are not paying and somehow, you know, widen it. Donna is going to pay um, dearly, you know, from, from not getting um, the support from our donor partners because they think that there's still the, the, this kanka of ghost names that is always, you know, bereftin us as a country. So we should look at it and address it and address it properly. You know, the issue to do with corruption is still a tagline on this country. And if we don't address it, you know, if government does not show the commitment, serious, it's not just rhetorical commitment, but serious commitment towards addressing the issue of corruption, you know, then, you know, we'll still be talking about these things come 2015. He foresees challenging times ahead in 2015 if the country is not rescued with the bill out. In 2015, I expect it to be uh, a much more difficult year for businesses. Um, if you look at the tax that has been introduced by government, it's, it's really going to be quite daunting on, 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 on businesses. Um, if you look at the power problem that we have, if we should enter 2015, first quarter, second quarter, and we, ha we have not been able to sustain the supply, it's going to be a challenging year. I mean, we, we've not clearly heard from the IMF whether they are going to give us the necessary support that Ghana is requesting from them. If in the first few, in the first few weeks of January and February, we do not hear anything very positive from the IMF, 2015 certainly will be a challenging year. He cautioned government to show more commitment in dealing with macroeconomic instabilities going into 2015. Well, that's more analysis and economists say the Ghanaian economy has been quite resilient in the 2014 fiscal year, although the outlook for 2015 is not too good. Speaking on Joy News' weekly business life program, they argued the economy could face turbulence if the energy crisis is not dealt with accordingly. We see that although the economy has been able to withstand, but then the shock is there. We are still uh, experiencing negative uh, growth in the manufacturing sector, which grew by about uh, negative 8%. Mm -hmm. uh, the service sector actually did not perform as it did last year. If you look at inflation, the inflation rate is still going up. It's about 17% now, as against 9% or so that were targeted. Uh, the government fiscal deficit is still widening is still huge although we were able to be down on uh, the previous years to about 9.5 but still we missed the target mm -hmm. from 8.8 yeah. uh, percent so um, it doesn't look too good where I'm standing uh, because uh, government is doing it bit in trying to consolidate its fiscal position but that also has a ripple effect on the economy because uh, too much tightening it will be at the expense sometime at the expense of the growth of the economy oh, yeah. which a bit, which which leads to many people suffering businesses mm -hmm. suffering and what have you so uh, it's quite difficult and the outlook also doesn't look so good particularly looking at the falling price of crude oil and the energy situation still persisting. A lot of, uh, a lot of uh, projects and programs in the 2015 budget mm -hmm. are predicated on the use of annual budget funding mm -hmm. amount which virtually mm -hmm. eventually will come from uh, oh, yeah. petroleum revenue. Mm -hmm. Now that the prices are going down, uh, uh, I would now say abysmal, <laughs> a major players in the market such as uh, Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. have already started recording deficits mm -hmm. in, their, in their budget for 2015 and that is a, a causing a lot of problem for them so we should be mindful that if 
things continue to go the way, we are going to have a shortfall from oil revenue, and that will actually affect us a lot in 2015. So when it comes to uh, crude oil prices internationally, I think the managers of the economy ought to be given a second thought about that, because that is, that is a risky aspect to, uh, to, to that. That's very important. Well, just a few days to end the year, we'll still do more diagnosis of 2014. But away from local business to international business, Greek MPs have rejected the presidential candidate nominated by Prime Minister Antoni Samaras, triggering a snap general election. Stavros Dimas failed to reach the necessary 180 votes, which means that Parliament will have to be dissolved. Greece's economy has begun to recover after six years of recession. But Greeks have endured years of austerity and the left-wing Syriza party leading the polls once the terms of the huge EU IMF bailouts renegotiated. Although unemployment in Greece has begun falling from a record 28% early this year, it is still extremely high at 25.5%. Responding to the vote, the International Monetary Fund said talks on completing a review of the bailout with Greece would need if it were to leave the EU IMF program would take place only when a new government was in place. The eighth in stock market fell 7% as news of the vote sunk in with bank shares among the West affected. Bank of Paris shares slammed 9% after recovering from earlier record lows. Investors sold off Greek government bonds, pushing bond deals above 9%. The government's borrowing costs on 10-year bonds rose to 9.7% in a reminder of the 2010 crisis when 10-year bonds soared above 11%. Bond yields also rose in Spain and Italy, two other countries hit hard by the Eurozone debt crisis. And that will be all for business. I'm Abigail Adumapu. Do stay on. Good morning. Business News. Let's take some more local stories and congestion at the country's psychiatric hospital should soon be a thing of the past. The Mental Health Board is pushing for a ceiling of at most 50 patients to be admitted to each psychiatric unit across the country. Chief Psychiatrist Dr. Kwesiose disclosed this at a brief ceremony by an NGO to honor him for his passion for mental health care. The Accra Psychiatric Hospital has over the years been hit by a number of issues including poor sanitation, poor infrastructure and congestion, as well as inadequate funding from government. Health officials continue to battle the odds to provide health care to the patients there. Beautiful Minds and Wellness Foundation, a non-governmental organization made up of mental health professionals and human rights advocates, on Monday honored Chief Psychiatrist Dr. For his exceptional care to the mentally ill in society. Accepting the award, Dr. Akwesiose expressed the hope that the implementation of the Mental Health Act will help reduce the challenges associated with psychiatric care. We have the Mental Health Act, which is going to change everything. So the challenges we have now, in the next two, three, four, most than five years, things will be very different. And that is what we are driving hard, working towards implementing the Mental Health Act. Country Director of Beautiful Minds and Wellness Foundation, John Kwame Kwesen, called on the public to support the psychiatric hospitals. So I'm appealing to the general public that we have psychiatric hospitals in Ghana here. They've been neglected for far too long. So the little we can do, let's just do to support them. Beatrice Sowers report for Joy News. Up next is Showbiz. Ace broadcaster Kwesiche Idakwa KKD is set to spend another night in prison or in police custody as his bail application could not be heard in court on Monday. Hours before KKD was processed by the police for court over a sexual assault case 
filed against him by a 19-year-old lady, his lawyer, Nana Santibedieto, told Joy News that his client had a strong case for bail. His lawyer, however, did not have the chance to put in a bid for his client's bail due to the late arrival in court of both the prosecution and defense teams. KKD was arrested on Saturday night at the African Region Hotel for allegedly sexually assaulting the teenager who spent some time with him. He has been in the custody of the airport police command since his arrest. And also the last weekend of 2014 has been an eventful one where there were lots of events and activities to keep party heads in the great mood throughout the long weekend. And for such persons, and the Christmas spirit was the best that they had so far despite the economic challenges. The showbiz train rolled through the capital city over the weekend to catch up with some more Yuletide events. Our first stop was the Accra Sports Stadium where Christians and gospel lovers gathered in worship and praise with U.S. award-winning gospel musician Alvin Slaughter and South African gospel musician Patrick Duncan. Patrons here describe the night as awesome and anointing filled. At the Accra International Conference Center, Ghana was rocking with the concert GH Rocks. Renowned musicians, including Adam. <laughs> Stoneboy, Sarkodie, so many among others gave fans and patrons an unforgettable performance for the year 2014. more events coming up before the year ends and showbiz will continue to fill you in as they unfold. Maybe you can tell us how your Christmas was or how, how your weekend was on our social media platform where that's it for showbiz. <laughs> For the bulletin, before we go, though, a look again at our top stories. Deputy Water Resources Minister has led a fact-finding team to get first-hand information on reports of erratic water supply to Adenton and its environs. Ace broadcaster Kwesi Chedakwa to spend another night behind bars as he failed to make bail in alleged sexual assault case brought against him. And Scotland is said to have recorded its first case of the deadly Ebola disease. There's more news at myjoyonline.com and multitvworld.com. You can also follow me. I tweet at jnewsgifty. Or you can look for me on Facebook. Up next is PM Express with Nana and Sakal. Many thanks for your time.